I'm here today to show you a powerful, finished, open source data collection application that embraces the WebGIS pattern and supports rich data modeling through the use of pop-ups, attachments, related records, and it does so in an online and an offline context. The sample data set brings us to weird and, I think, wonderful Portland, Oregon, and is comprised of every street tree maintained by the city. Using related tables, we're able to maintain inspections of these trees year after year and classify those trees by their species. Because I know that network connection in Portland can be spotty, I like to take the area of the map offline in advance of my workday. So I've done that, and let's jump to the offline map. So I step outside the office, and immediately I see a tree. Let's identify that tree on the map. It's a pine tree. Of course, we're located downtown, but it says here that the condition of this tree is poor. It looks quite healthy to me, but it makes sense that it's in says poor, because the last inspection was taken in 2013. So why don't I add a new inspection? This is a related record. Of course, we're collecting it today. I think it's in good condition. Collected by me. And before I save this record, I'd like to actually snap a photo of this tree as well. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Why do I nickname this tree? And I will persist the record. If we head back to the tree record, you can see now that an additional inspection has been made. It's for today, and the condition's good. Now that I've finished for my work for the day, I'll head back to the office where I have good network connection and I'll synchronize my offline work back to the web map. This performs a bi-directional sync. So you've seen the application, and you might be wondering, where can I find the source code? I'll direct you all to the ArcGIS for Developers website, and specifically the SDK page of your choice. Now, this is an iOS application, so I'll direct you to the iOS SDK page. And on this page, you can click the Open Source Apps hyperlink. This page contains a list of every open source application that we maintain for you. Of course, this is data collection for iOS. And on this page, we'll have all the information that you need to know about this particular application for your development. We encourage you to submit PRs. We encourage you to submit feature requests. And we encourage you to be a part of this living project. Thank you so much. To show you another open source application, I'd like to hand you off to Kerry. Thanks, Eli. In addition to providing a simple way to build great clients to WebGIS, the runtime SDKs also allow you to add rich GIS capability to your standalone apps. This is a dynamic situational awareness open source app, and it provides best practices for building offline, real-time situational awareness workflows. It's built using the runtime SDK for Qt, and it's available on GitHub now. There's many scenarios while you need uh, situational awareness in the field, including providing security to major events like the G20 summit or the World Cup. Organizations who provide humanitarian aid and disaster relief need in, uh, situational awareness in the field in order to stay informed and provide relief in the most efficient way possible. In this case, I'm simulating a military exercise in Monterey, California. This app was written for a touchscreen interface, and it's meant to be mounted inside a vehicle. And you can see my position being simulated here by the blue dot that's moving around. The app shows several aspects of situational awareness. The first have to do with perception of your environment and that geospatial contextual information and the ability to work with data that's local on your device, so no dependency on a connection to a server. In this case, I have a mobile scene package already loaded up into my device with all of that rich content that I need to perform my mission. This includes some areas of interest that I'm monitoring in purple, some observation towers in white, 
and then some analysis that's been run on incidents that have happened near lines of communication or the roads in the area. You see those in the kind of orange and, and yellow colors. Runtime supports several different package and file formats, such as GeoPackage, KML, and Shapefile. And it supports a multitude of raster formats as well, such as this high-resolution satellite image. I can also work with several different base maps on my device, and so I'll choose the imagery base map. Now, the ability to understand this information in 3D gives me enhanced understanding of my environment. Runtime supports several 3D environments as well, or 3D data formats as well, such as point cloud and the integrated mesh. And coming soon is the ability to work subsurface. Having a real-time understanding of my environment is necessary so that I can see where my teammates are. I can see the observations they're making in the field and information that's being gathered from some of the sensors in the area. Runtime works really well in these highly dynamic environments, and I can visualize these feeds from my teammates that are being shared over a peer-to-peer -peer network. The military symbols that you see here are built using an advanced cartographic information model that's available in the SDK. Each symbol is based on a unique code where each character in that code depicts a different aspect of the symbol. So now that I have a real-time understanding of my environment, I need to be able to comprehend and analyze the situation so that I can make decisions and predictions. The exploratory analysis tools in, that are now available in runtime give us an understanding of the terrain. I can use the line of sight tool to see where I'm visible to some of those observation towers in the area. This analysis is being performed in real time as my location updates. And at any time, I can see how many observation towers I'm visible to up here in the upper right-hand corner. But when you're working in the field, you can't always be looking at your display to do this type of visual analysis. You need to be informed when certain situations arrive. I can create conditions in my app that are evaluated against these real-time feeds. And when that condition or that rule is met, I get alerted and notified to the situation. We can use the power of the geometry engine to do analysis like geofencing and proximity analysis. In this case, I've created an event that alerts me when events occur within an area of interest that I'm monitoring. So we see there's a few alerts that are happening here. I can orient myself to that location in the display, and now I can act on it. In this case, I'm just going to send a simple sketch to my teammates. And I'm going to share that over the peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, I've been running this on a Panasonic Toughbook, which is a Windows tablet. But using the power of Qt's Build Once, Deploy Anywhere capability, I can also deploy it on any of the platforms that Qt supports, such as Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS. But I'm happy to announce today that we also have an SDK for embedded Linux. And this allows us to build for more of a true in-vehicle experience that you can achieve on technology such as devices like this. This is from our friends at NVIDIA, and it's a Jetson TX2. It's an artificial intelligence onboard edge device. And it's running the Dynamic Situational Awareness app. So now you can take the power of GIS and, and allow it to work on these types of devices that run in environments such as in dashboards in cars, or in drones, or maybe in robots. How cool is that? Pretty cool. Yeah. And I think it's so cool that this is an opportunity to start trending a new hashtag. Let's keep it simple. Let's do hashtag ArcGIS embedded. Can you guys help me with that? All right. Let's do it. Thanks.